lowering the boiling point of this water to room temperature. Hello and welcome back to the shop and uh, before we get started with today's video, uh, some of you guys that follow me on Facebook already know, I, me and Brad Jacob, um, basement machine shop, basement shop guy, he, uh, he and I had met up at Keith Fender's shop uh, Thursday and Friday and uh, hung out with Keith for a while, was able to pick his brain about something, showed us around the shop, we delivered the what's in your box to all, Brad delivered the what's in your box uh, tool giveaway tools, I delivered my one. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we just had a great time and uh, he was uh, showing us the plasma cam and he actually made us both uh, signs for our shop and let me just show you mine I have I've been looking for and trying to come up with some sort of shop logo and uh, Keith came up with it for me uh, so probably within I don't know maybe about 10 minutes of work he uh, was able to pull this up and make it on the uh, <clears throat> plasma cam software there and uh, burn it out and it came out really good I mean you can see the detail on the little lathe here you can see even the little hand wheel uh, has the knob there <coughs> excuse me so um, we're gonna be painting uh, painting this up and uh, hanging it up in the shop and maybe uh, making some other things out of it <coughs> so as far as the subject of uh, today's video goes uh, we're gonna be playing with this right here and uh, this is my everyday go-to vacuum pump I use at work. So this is a um, JB Half Horse uh, two-stage vacuum pump, actually 7 CFM, and the model number is DV200N. Um, this is an older one. This has been sitting and kicking around in my truck since I started the company, and actually even before that, um, it's uh, actually a 97. And it's perfectly fine. It's able to pull down to 300 microns, no problem. Um, <clears throat> now the 7 CFM in my opinion, at least for what I do, is the perfect size. Uh, it gives me the perfect kind of power to weight ratio. Um, it's got plenty of power to do 90% uh, of what I need it to do. If I have a larger system, it's not that much of an issue because I can just gang two of these together. Um, I can put one, vacuum one up, on, especially if I'm doing some sort of split system. I can vacuum uh, up on the roof and down the coil at the same side, at the same time and basically effectively get 14 CFM. Um, but it's light enough and portable enough for me to carry around and for me to carry up and, up and down on the roof comfortably. Um, you get big larger than this, uh, they get pretty heavy pretty quick. Uh, and some of the really, really large ones you'll see, uh, you know, they have a cart that goes with them and it's no, there's no possible way for me to pull that up on the roof. So for me, this is the perfect size. And this works perfectly fine, there's just a couple little issues with it. Um, I already replaced the uh, cord, which is no problem. Uh, you know, that's a wear item. You're going to eventually wear out the cord from wrapping it or accidentally slicing it, or even sometimes you get oil or something on it, it deteriorates the cord. But either way, um, I actually broke the ground, the ground off of the old one. So we put a new one on there, not an issue. Um, the two little front rubber feet deteriorated and uh, fell off, and I have two new ones I was able to get from the JB rep, given to me for nothing. So we got some bolts. We'll put these on but um, the main problem with this is uh, I'm getting a little bit of leaks around this side glass now it's nothing major in other words it's not leaking all the oil out it's just enough to be annoying um, so we're gonna see where that's coming from we're actually gonna take this whole shell off the front here look inside clean everything up they probably just clean up the outside in general because it's a uh, she's a little bit cruddy because it's been in my truck forever uh, oil up the motor and just do it once over and change the oil um, now most of the oil actually is out of this because it accidentally fell over in my truck and you guys, most of you guys know that have these, um, if you knock this thing over by accident in your truck um, and with the way I drive, you know, it happens. Um, all the oil comes out the exhaust port and all over the back of your truck. Uh, even though I had this bungee corded up, the bungee cord just slipped down enough for it to tilt and leak most of the oil out. So I'm going to take the rest of it out, we're going to pop this cover off here, we're going to clean it up seal up this uh, sight glass, put more oil in it, and we're actually going to do some experiments with it. Um, I have a poor man's uh, you know, vacuum chamber here, and um, I'm going to show you exactly why we use these vacuum pumps. We're going to see uh, what it does to water, uh, what it does to a balloon, and uh, we're going to just uh, basically play around with it. And I think you guys will find it kind of interesting. So let me just, uh, there's a little drain cock on the bottom here. I'm going to drain out the rest of the oil, or as much as will come out of here, 
and then um, I'll put some towels on the bench here and we'll pop this all apart and see what's inside. Now first things first is just getting this face off here. That's just Allen screws. I just don't, I don't have uh, one of the long T-handle ones otherwise that would be perfect for you but no matter this is working fine. What I'm also going to do too is I'm going to put an O-ring on this uh, this fill port right here is the oil fill and I put an o-ring on there because uh, when I put pressure on it we had a little bit of uh, oil bubbling up out of there and just the two on this side Okay, so let's see if we can separate the housing. <clears throat> uh, two on the bottom here. Missed them. A little bit of oxidization on the uh, aluminum there. Probably got sat in something that's flaking off. Whatever that is, is coming right off. So, like I said, we're going to clean this all up anyway. Ah. There we go. Alright, now this should pop right off, and it does. So we have a little rubber gasket here. It's perfectly fine. And now I'm not going to take this all apart because um, it's working fine. So I'm not going to mess with the valve plate or anything. But you can kind of see up here is the little reed valves. And all this basically um, swims in oil. Uh, we got some, uh, you know, brown nasties in here from years of use. We're going to clean all this up, suck out the old oil, and you can see some of the some of the nasties in there too. And get rid of all of that. Now that is not metal sludge. In other words, that's not metal flakes. I think that's just sludge in the oil from um, from moisture. So I'm going to clean all of that up and get this all cleaned out. So that's what it's looking like inside. And right up here are two little reed valves. And a little bit of rust on there, like I said, for moisture. Um, the oil in this stuff likes to absorb moisture a lot. So that's why you got to keep up a change in this. And uh, like I said, I've had this thing forever and it was used by other people before I got to it. So, all right, uh, I'm just gonna wipe everything down. We'll clean it up with degreaser and then we'll come back. Okay, <clears throat> okay, so we got everything in there all nice and cleaned out. Got the outside cleaned out. You can see I got some darkness on the bottom. That's oxidization, I know exactly what that's from. Um, that's from acid cleaning a unit when I was vacuum pumping and having the vacuum pump on the ground and the water run up against it. Um, but it's not through the aluminum, it's perfectly fine. And we clean out the inside of this. 
and if you can see down in here right there's the shaft coupling into the vacuum pump section so basically we have two feet that are supposed to sit right here which I have so I sit right into these little cutouts like so oh, upside down so we'll bolt those in place now this looks like it's able to be pressed out um, the sight glass there it looks like it's all one piece and it's actually able to be pressed out so let me grab uh, this here see if I can just hit it on the end here So it looks like I can actually get a whole brand new one if I need to. Uh, we'll see if we can salvage this one because it's a piece of glass in a brass uh, cup and the edge is rolled over and crimped on a gasket. So what I'm going to try to do, I mean I can see the gasket right there. I know where it's leaking which is right at the bottom here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it upside down and uh because the oil usually never reaches this side so i'm going to flip it up like this and see if it holds uh if not i can just probably order a new one of these not a huge thing and to get this back in place what i'll do is i have uh some gasket sealer uh we'll run a bead of that around here and pop that sucker right in so um yeah yeah there's definitely a gasket in there well, there's no way to get this apart. Let me zoom in on it. So you can see here, it's all one piece. And you can see the gasket in there, and basically that edge is rolled and pinched. So there's no way to uh, mess with that. So what I'm going to try to do is, um, like I said, I'll flip it end over end, and I uh, will put it back into place and if that doesn't work I'll, I'll just order one of these from JB not a huge thing okay so I got this uh, back in and all sealed up and they get the feet back in place we just need the gasket in place here Okay, and I ran this over uh, a glass lap real quick just to clean up the face. <clears throat> but that wasn't leaking or bothering me, so we should be perfectly fine. All right, so I've already put one of these in there, and it's obviously going to need more. So I'm going to zoom in right on that sight glass, and you'll be able to see the oil level uh, should be around there All right, you can see it filling up. Almost there. And there it is. So we're right in line with this. Put the cap back on here.
Now I'm just going to plug it in for a sec. And since we had it dry, I want to let the oil circulate into everything. good there's no drips in the bottom here anymore but I with that sight glass what I was able to do is there's a there's a, a face gasket on the inside of it I was actually able to take a small screwdriver and go into this hole and kind of pack it back into itself and I flipped the whole get the whole sight glass upside down so it was leaking right at this bottom edge and uh, you got zero drips in that so now we can play with it okay so we have a little vacuum chamber rigged up here for our couple of experiments we're gonna do um, now we're going to get a little sciency on you. Okay, so at sea level, if you, I, if you were standing 100% at sea level, on your body, exerted on your body at all times is 14.7 psi. So at all times we have 14.7 psi uh, pressing on our body. And that is due to the weight of the air. Now what do you mean by weight of the air? Well, picture this table here. Picture this table, it's probably easy to see it over here. Picture this table here at sea level, okay? So if that's sea level, and picture the top of this scale as the upper atmosphere. So basically you have this col entire column of air pushing down. So the higher up you go, the less pressure there is, which is why airplanes have to be pressurized. It's also why some of you guys that may live out uh, in the higher altitudes um, you guys also uh, get um, different cooking instructions for above 2,000 feet sea level because of the pressure difference. Because, and we'll we'll go into that a little bit more in depth on the uh, the next section. Um, but basically, if you're at sea level, you have this entire column of air, the weight of it actually pushing down on you. So right now, I have this little fingertips of the gloves, and it has some air in it. You can see. Okay, now there is 14.7 psi, pounds per square inch, pushing on this right now. That is basically compressing the air and not, in, not allowing this to fill up all the way. Now I can fill it up by adding more air. But what we can also do, which is pretty cool, is if we slip this in the vacuum chamber, okay, and we hook it up, you're going to see something cool happen. Okay. You see that inflate right away? Now what just happened is I evacuated all that air out of this chamber, so now you do not have 14.7 psi pushing down on that. You have a lot less, which allows the air inside to expand and inflate more of, uh, expand in volume and inflate more of that glove. Now, now, if I take this off and let the atmosphere back in, it's going to compress back into its original size because that column of air that's above us is going to be pushing on this at 14.7 psi. Now, what's really cool to do that with is a marshmallow because a marshmallow is mostly air inside and it does the exact same thing. Uh, I would put a marshmallow in there, but I don't have any in the house. Now, what we use the vacuum pump for in air conditioning refrigeration, number one, is re to uh, remove most of uh, the air out of the system, because air and refrigerant don't mix, and also to remove moisture out of the system. Now, you can change the boiling point of water depending on how much pressure it's under. So here at sea level, okay, our water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, higher elevations, like say Denver, their water boils at less of a temperature, which if you look for cooking instructions on the back of some packages, they'll adjust the time for higher elevations because the water boils sooner. Now in the case of uh, a boiler, we can actually get that water hotter than 212 degrees. Uh, a boiler or a hot water heater, uh, like, a, like a forced hot water heater system for your house, 
usually runs around uh, say 215 to 220 degrees and how it can do that is that boiler is under pressure boiler is usually under what 15 to 20 psi somewhere around that neighborhood the more pressure you put on that water the hotter it is to boil the more heat it can it can hold before it boils now as i said the opposite's always true so we can actually drop the pressure of a system and we can boil off the water at room temperature. In the shop down here right now, it's probably in around close to 58, 60 degrees, okay? So we have plain old water. Okay? And now we're gonna remove the pressure off of that. pressure and you're starting to see bubbles form. Well, you know what? It helps if I screw the cap down. <laughs> from this vessel, thereby lowering the boiling point of this water to room temperature. Okay, that water is boiling and evaporating. And this is how we remove moisture from a system, is we boil it off by lowering the pressure. And it's a, for us, it's a measure in uh, microns. We have gauges that measure in microns, which is like micro pressure. As this is boiling off, it, it is creating some steam and pressure in this vessel, which is then being removed by the vacuum pump. Um, for us, that's how we measure uh, our, our vacuum. We measure it in microns, which is a, a, a very small measurement of vacuum. And if we have moisture or anything in the system that is boiling off when we, when we shut our vacuum pump off, we can see a spike in pressure, which will tell us either we have moisture in the system or we have a small leak. Now, by increasing the heat here, increasing the heat load on the, just by warming the glass, we can see, we can make it bubble, uh, boil off faster which we can, we can do it in the tray too with a heat gun. What we have is uh, oil, the oil of our refrigeration systems likes to uh, absorb moisture a lot. So we don't want to have that system over to the air for a long time. But what we can do to help this process out is we can take a heat gun and hit the parts that are gonna absorb moisture the most. So like the, the bottom of the compressor where the oil is, you can heat it up with a heat gun and kind of hasten that boil off process. Now we're obviously not having standing water in our system. Hopefully we're not having standing water in the system. Um, but we are having uh, small water molecules bonded with the oil or uh, water vapor in the lines itself. And that's how we remove the moisture from the system. And you'll see as soon as I shut this off, from that water boiling, we'll actually increase the pressure in this vessel to the point that it will stop. So you see it stop boiling. yet we're still under a vacuum. Okay, so uh, pump's ready to go back into service and uh, we kind of showed you how it worked and you know what it's capable of doing. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you on the next one.